Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial. If you follow our main channel, you may have seen Stray for Game Boy that we animated. And a lot of people have been asking us, how do you get the Game Boy graphics to look like Game Boy graphics? Uh, like it's actually playing on a Game Boy. And how did you do that part with the video at the end where it actually looks like a Game Boy camera filter. So in the first part of the video, I'm going to show you how to create a Game Boy camera filter and make everything look like Game Boy graphics. And in the second part, I'm actually going to put it on top of a Game Boy and make it look like it's actually the pixels of a Game Boy, just like we did with Stray. If you don't want to do this tutorial, you can always just download the project files with a link in the description. You can find them on our Patreon and use them for your project or whatever. Uh, so let's get started right away. I'm going to turn this little piece of footage into Game Boy graphics and I'm gonna do that by starting with a new composition I'm gonna call this screen and I'm going to make this 160 by 144 pixels because that's the resolution of an actual Game Boy and I'm gonna put it to like 10 seconds and I'm gonna press OK there we go and I'm going to drag that little piece of footage in there and as you can see it's way too big so I'm going to scale that down a little bit let's say to 20% there we go move that over a little bit so it's too far to the left let's play that real quick there we go it looks good oh, a little bit more you know nice and centered and I'm going to turn these colors into Game Boy colors which are well you would say different shades of green they're actually black and white on a green screen uh, with pixels turning off and on. But for now, for the, for the sake of this part, I'm going to turn this into shades of green. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a adjustment layer. I'm gonna put all the effects on there, right there, not on the, uh, on the video itself. So for that, I have an effect called Colorama put that on there and as you can see while well, this is really trippy and it's not what we want I can change the input I can change the output but in this case I'm just gonna touch the output and you can see the exact rainbow colors right there six of them but the Game Boy only had four so I'm gonna delete a couple of them these on the sides right there and I actually got a Game Boy palette I'll show it on screen right now and I'm going to mimic those colors so I'll be right back there we go to save you some time these are the Game Boy colors that I picked and if I scrub through it, well, you can see something weird. Um, there's a lot of shades of green and not just four shades of green. So I'm gonna turn off interpolate palette right there and it will actually turn to exactly these four colors. But as you can see, this little triangle right here, that's off because that should actually be white. Let me turn that off. See, that's really white. So all these colors are a little off, uh, luckily, I can phase shift them a little bit. I think a minus 45 is actually perfect. And right there, there is a lot of contrast missing though. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a levels to this, but instead of adding the levels under the colorama, I'm gonna add it on top of the colorama. You can see there's a lot of colors right here in the center, a little bit on the left, which is the black parts and almost nothing on the white parts. If I turn this off real quick, I can actually move these together, increase the brightness a lot, but I'm gonna keep that on. So I get the results right away. I'm gonna do a slight U shift right there, minus 46, then that a little bit. And then the center one is to adjust the contrast to one color or the other. I think this is good. Let me actually play this real quick. This is a quick test. Hello everyone. This is a test. <laughs> Nom. Oh. So I think that's actually perfect for now. Uh, again, there's only four colors, so it will never look amazing. But for now, this is fine. I actually included the Photoshop file with some bits and pieces that you can throw in your animation. So I'm gonna do that as well. I got it right here. And obviously you can create your own art. I'm gonna add that one and maybe uh, add the eyes real quick. There we go, that are hard, that are hard here. And if you look closely, well, those are really blurry, but they're supposed to be nice and pixelated. And that's because they are actually being interpolated. But if I turn this little icon off here, if you miss this, click on the toggle switches and modes. And I don't only click them once, because they will become more smooth, but click them again and you get a little dotted line right there. So now if I move this around, it will stay really nice and crisp. I've got the little hearts right there. I can animate them. And if I drag them under the adjustment layer, they will actually get converted to the right colors as well. Obviously you don't have to make your pixel art in black and white. That's just how we did it right here for this very simple. And if I want, I can animate these, make them pop in and even add the eyes and just tweak the position until I'm happy. Just for fun, Let's see how it looks. There we go, it sort of tracks the camera and eats the hearts. So I'm gonna cut off the hearts there. So let's see how that looks. This is a quick test. Hello everyone, this is a test. <laughs> Nom. Oh. 
And that is basically the gist of it. That's basically how you turn something into Game Boy graphics. All right, so this looks pretty good. This looks like Game Boy camera footage with some added bits and pieces right there. And I track the eyes and it's a lot of fun. I can make the hearts wiggle around a little bit. But for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to go to the second part of this tutorial and that's taking this animation right here and make it look like it's actually running on a Game Boy. So that's what I'm gonna do right now in the second part. And first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to import a picture of a Game Boy that come with the project files. Otherwise you can find your own image and I can create a new composition. I'm gonna make that 1920 by 1080. I'm gonna call this Game Boy. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add the screen to the stage. I'm gonna add it right there so it becomes nice and centered. And as you can see, well, obviously it's really small because it's only 160 by 144 pixels. So I'm gonna scale that up until I'm happy. And I'm gonna take a nice and round number. Let's go with 500. But if I zoom in, you can see that is super blurry right now. And again, if you don't want After Effects to interpolate the pixels, you can turn that off by clicking it not once, but twice. And there we go, it's super crisp and super sharp. And because it's scaled up exactly 500%, all the pixels are exactly five pixels. And I got my picture of the Game Boy, I'm gonna drag it behind it, scale it accordingly. A little smaller, a little bigger. And that's great, but now it still doesn't really look like it's on the Game Boy. You can see it right here, like the, the colors are way off. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to convert them back to black and white. Now, obviously I can do that in the adjustment layer right here. I can instead make these, the colors green and lighter green. I can make them black and white, but I wanna see like how it would look on the original Game Boy screen. So I'm gonna keep it as it is. And I'm going to show you how we did it. Again, you can just skip that step and, and just change the colors there. Or you do what we do. And I'm gonna say change to color. I'm gonna add that to the screen right here. Zoom in a little bit. And I will actually pick one color, in this case white, and then change it to another color which is white. And I got my little eyedropper tool right here. I'm gonna select the lightest green, it's this one, and it will turn red, but don't worry. It's going to map to white eventually. Instead of just doing U, I'm gonna go U, lightness and saturation. So now it will actually turn all the way to white. However, the tolerance is way too high. I need to go all the way to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 percent. So only that color will change. So this is perfect. I'm gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna say, hey, grab that slightly darker green, just that one. And don't turn it white, and instead turn it soft gray. Duplicate it again, make that even darker green, turn it into a darker gray. Okay, one more time, the darkest green, turn that into black. You can tweak these shades of gray until you're happy, but I think this is about right. And I'm gonna set this to mode multiply. And already it looks a little bit more like it's actually in the scene. You can see the lightest part of the greens are actually see-through now, and the darkest parts are just completely black. And that's because I converted it once again. This is way too dark right now, but uh, we'll fix that in a second. I'm gonna close these real quick. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make the pixels separated because right now all the pixels are one solid. And on the Game Boy, they're actually like little pixels side by side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the rectangle tool, create a random rectangle, doesn't really matter. Make sure you have nothing selected, otherwise it will create a mask. Open that up, rectangle path, and right here you'll find the size. And well, we scaled to 500% before, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make every pixel five by five pixels. Zoom in a little bit and you can see it will become a little square with a black border. Let's make it a white square. If yours is not white, let's make it white and let's give it a black outline. I give it a black outline of one and put it all the way in the center. Zoom in a little bit, but this is fine. So that little one pixel right there, I wanna duplicate that to the right and down. 160 pixels to the right, 144 pixels down. So I'm gonna select add right there, repeater. And it will start repeating, in this case, two times. So if I open up repeater, you can see, well, three copies, one, two, three, and an offset of 100. But I don't want it to be 100, I want it to be exactly five. So all the pixels are exactly snug right next to each other. And instead of three copies, I will say 160 copies. Let me zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna close this repeater. I will close the rectangle as well. And I'm gonna duplicate this repeater. So if I duplicate this, it will start going off screen and obviously that's not good. Um, we want it to go down. Instead of saying 160 copies, I will say 144 copies. Instead of going five pixels to the right, I'll say go five pixels down. And now you can see that the grid lines up perfectly. I'll call this pixel grid, pixel grid. Turn it off and turn it on. And I'm gonna use these lines 
to exactly cut out little chunks of those pixels. So if you're not in the track mat window, be sure to click toggle switches and modes. So you can see it right here. I'm gonna go select the screen. I'm gonna select pixel grid, in my track mat. And instead of going alpha mat, click it one more time and it will go to luma mat. If yours is turned around, you can always like turn around if you want. But in this case, now you can little cuts out of that grid. Now if I want it, I can open up the rectangle and uh, mess around with the stroke width. So I can even make it bigger and bigger. Now, now it's really small. Obviously that does not make a lot of sense. Or I can go 0.5, make the lines really subtle. I think I'm happy with the 0.5, uh, really subtle and close that. I can lock that for now. I'll lock the Game Boy as well. And I got the screen right here. And well, if you look closely, the grid is way too nice, way too precise, way too mathematical. And the pixels on the Game Boy weren't that solid. They were a lot more messy. So I'm going to give it a little displacement so it gets a little distorted, a little noisy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new solid. Blue is fine. And I'm gonna add a fractal noise. Not a regular noise, fractal noise. And if I look at that, you'll see these clouds and that's not good. We want it to become more noisy. So I open up the transform and I scale it all the way down. All the way down. Maybe to one, maybe to two. I think two is nice. I'm gonna turn off the noise for now and I'm gonna select the pixel and the screen. I'm gonna pre-compose them real quick. I'm actually gonna remove the multiply, set it back to normal for now. Select them both, right click, pre-compose. I will call this screen displacement and put it back on multiply. There we go, works just like it was before. And now I'm just gonna add a displacement map on the pre-position right there. In the displacement map layer, it will actually automatically select a screen displacement, but I wanted to select the noise. And if I select that, nothing happens. So why doesn't anything happen? It jumps one pixel or a couple of pixels, but that's not what it's supposed to happen. Actually, I wanted to look at the noise, but also calculate the effects on top of that, which was the noise itself. Just like that, it will become really, really noisy. And that's way too much. The Game Boy was bad, but not that bad. So instead of displacing five pixels, I'm gonna say, oh, one, one. And you get a nice rough displacement. Turn it off, smooth, turn it on, it's displacement. Not too much. If you like, you can increase it even more, but I think one is fine for now. So the last step in this process that, well, it's still a little too flat and I wanted to drop a little shadow because the original Game Boy had pixels that turned on and made the screen darker instead of your phone or your screen where it's pixels that light up and light the screen. Instead of that on the Game Boy, it will actually become darker. But that also meant if you put a lamp on it, it will actually make a little drop shadow. So I'm going to duplicate this, duplicate. It will become really dark, we'll fix that in a second. I'm gonna move that over a little bit right there. And I'm going to add a little blur to it, to a Gaussian blur, say four pixels, that's about right. And while this is way too dark, the Game Boy wasn't that good at displaying dark pixels. So I'm gonna open the transparency of both. I'm gonna make the shadow a little lighter. And you know what, I'm gonna make the original content a little lighter too. Just tweak it around until you're happy. So this is without the drop shadow and this is with. You can make that as dark as you want. You can change the light if you want. In this case, I'm just gonna put it in the bottom right. So let's play it now. This is a quick test. Hello everyone, this is a test. <laughs> Nom. Oh. And there you have it. Now it actually looks like it's playing on top of a Game Boy. So what we did is we made a Game Boy resolution composition, added a video, added some elements, then created a adjustment layer, in which we added some levels, created a colorama with the right colors, changed the colors to black and white again. This is an optional step. We then added the pixel grid to cut out the little lines. And one more step, we added the noise to give it a little displacement and we added the shadow and there you have it that's how you create game boy graphics and make it look like it's actually running on an actual game boy if you have any questions be sure to ask them in the comments please like share subscribe also feel free to join the discord uh, ask your questions there if you would like to download these project files you can uh, with the links in the description thank you so much guys Bye -bye.